Hello, welcome to my channel. I hope all is well. I'm gonna talk about in my channel. I'm definitely gonna talk about makeup. I'm gonna talk about fashion. I'm gonna talk about politics. I'm gonna talk about the entertainment piece. I'm gonna talk about everything, God, everything. So welcome to my channel. The first vlog I am gonna definitely talk about is Aretha Franklin's funeral. I am gonna also talk about the scandals of it. I'm gonna talk about the Bobby Brown review and I'm also gonna talk about the Braxton's review. So let's get started with the Aretha Franklin situation. So as you all know that Aretha um, was um, laid to rest last Friday. It was a beautiful ceremony. Um, her first um, viewing was at the Charles Wright's um, Museum in Detroit, Michigan. She had three viewings, and um, her third viewing was at her um, church, her church that her, her that her father built. Um, the first outfit she had on a red outfit. As you all know, that um, Miss Franklin was a Delta. So that night they had um, she was dressed in red, and that night they had a, um, a viewing with her sorority. The next day she had on sky blue. It was still held at the um. At the Charles Wright Museum, she had to go Costco, of course. Um, third night, she had it at the um, she had it at her church, New Bafu. Um, she had on a pink outfit. Um, and here's the thing: the um, second outfit, the second um, the second viewing, they did show a picture of her. She looked very beautiful. I don't understand why would they put that out there. That was for the public. Not, it, I think that was very disrespectful on behalf of the family. I mean, that's a very disrespectful situation because, you know, they allowed, I mean, a special shout out goes out to the Franklins because they allowed y'all to, you know, say your final goodbyes to Miss Franklin because she meant a whole, she meant the whole world. You know, she, she was a, she was a, a figure. She was an impact throughout this whole world. So my prayers and my condolences goes out to the family of Miss um, Franklin. Um, lastly, the funeral it was televised <clears throat> and mind you there was a, um, another funeral going on um, Senator John McCain I'm also talk about that I'm gonna squeeze that in there as well um, they had a funeral for Senator John McCain um, as you all know John McCain died two weeks ago um, from cancer as well um, he leaves behind his wife and four sons and a daughter so my prayers goes out to the McCain family as well um, unfortunately, President Obama could not make it to the funeral because Aretha's funeral because he was busy with the McCain. So I understand he's a president, duty calls. But special shout goes to Bill goes out to Bill Clinton because he was at Aretha Franklin's funeral and he went to John McCain's funeral. But anywho, Aretha had on a gold dress. She looked very beautiful. Um, Louis Vuitton shoes. She she was dipped in gold, honey. She was look, she was looking she was looking beautiful. Looking very beautiful. I did not agree. I saw a picture of her in the casket as well. I did not agree with the pictures. I mean, that to me that was very disrespectful. It was for them, but you didn't. If you didn't pay money to go go to Detroit to um go to the funeral or whatever, you shouldn't have taken pictures of Aretha or whatever. And I think the church did that, so they should be ashamed of themselves. Um, let's talk about this funeral situation. Um, the choir. Before I say anything bad or anything about the choir. I want to definitely send a shout out to um, Ebenezer Amy, Ricky Dillard. He was a part of the um, part of the, the team. Richard Smallwood, a part of the team, and um, Myron Myron something. I forgot what's his last name, but you know who I'm talking about. They did a very good job, and those who who participated did a good job. I would say that it was it was kind of pitchy, kind of sorta, and it was it wasn't their fault because you know what I'm saying they got Grammys and all that other stuff. So I ain't gonna talk about my peeps, but the choir itself was kind of pitchy. I wish they would have spent more time with it. The song the song selections I really wasn't up. Um, I should wear a crown. That was beautiful. Total praise. It was beautiful. Um, the first parts it was beautiful. <laughs> to me um because i mean it fit for a queen it was kind of pitchy um and that's how i feel about the situation it was, the choir was very pitchy maybe it was the sound the sound was off a little bit i will say that um the song choices uh faith hill i think she should have sung a different song because you know so she looked like a clown in these streets i'm sorry and she and she's she's a grammy award winner 
So, yeah, we, we should have just picked out a different song for her. She shouldn't have sung that song or spent a little bit more time with her. You feel what I'm saying? With that song. And it would have flowed nicely. Um, Shirley Caesar, she always do her thing. Um, I can't say Tasha Cobb, she always do that thing, do her thing. Um, Bishop Mark, Paul Morton, Stella, Yolanda Adams, Stella, Fantasia, Stella, Jennifer Hudson, Amazing Grace with Stella. But I think that um, with with Fantasia, she took she took it there. You know what I'm saying? Her and Aretha had a beautiful relationship. Um, Aretha always been there for Fantasia. You know, her grandmother passed away about a few years ago. You know what I'm saying? And you know, Fantasia and and Aretha always had a relationship from day one. So you know, when I saw Fantasia song, um, Precious Lord, it's like I saw Aretha again. So Aretha probably, even though Aretha's presence is no longer here, um, her legacy lives on. It's inside of us. I'm very serious about this, and I'm also going to talk about the Child Childish Gambino album too. I got to talk about a lot of stuff. Um, who else? Um. Ariana Grande. I think she picked the right, the right song, but it was kind of it was kind of pitchy as well. The Clark sisters they did their thing. It was no, I mean even though Karen was pitchy, whatever she she did her thing and she and she did a very good job. I love Karen, and that's another thing. We're gonna talk. We're gonna we're gonna put a pin on in on Ariana Grande, but the Clark sisters they had a great relationship with um Miss Franklin because her mother and um. Miss Franklin was really close, and of course Aretha did um, sung at the Clark's um, mother's funeral. Maddie, Maddie Shaw Clark, and she's one of the. If you don't know who Maddie Shaw Clark is, she is like one of the top choir directors of our time. Like she, I mean, she she was a, she was responsible for the Detroit sound. One of the people pioneers who was responsible for the Detroit gospel sound. And it's, I mean, she was just bad, yo. Like she could sing her tell off, man. Like look her up. She's like, she was that chick. You feel me? But back to um, Aranda. I mean, Miss Grande. Number one, I think she had on a short dress. I think that was disrespectful. Somebody should have told her that she should have wore a long dress. You know, you're in a black church. I mean, I mean, and we're gonna we're gonna talk we're gonna talk about all that. The black church. There's a certain way that you carry yourself. You gotta what you gotta be presentable. Um, that dress was not presentable at all. And the thing that really pissed me off the most was if you look at the video with her and Pastor Ellis after she after he finished um, you know, talking with her, she said, Fuck you. If you look at it, this is what he said, when you, I'm telling you on my page I'm gonna speak when I'm gonna speak. She said the F word to him. I don't think that he was trying to hit on her or put his arm around her in a, in a disrespectful way. I don't think he did that. Pat, the Pastor Ellis that I know and love, he's not that type of person. He's friendly with everybody. That doesn't mean he's been faithful to his wife. That doesn't mean, child, honey, child, he wants you or wants you in any type of way. But I will say something about Jesse Jackson and Bill Clinton. They was, and Al Sharpton, they was, you know what I'm saying, being all pervert, be perverse, be, be perverted and stuff like that. Let's be clear about that. But I don't think Bishop Ellis would disrespect you in that type of way. That's not him. And while we on the subject of who was on the pulpit, Mr. Lewis Farrakhan. A lot of people was making a spectacle and saying, why, why, why the hell Mr. Farrakhan's on there, whatever. I'm going to tell you something. Mr. Farrakhan, and I'm a Christian. Mr. Farrakhan is a prophet of our time. And to be honest with you, a lot of these pastors, a lot of these civil rights leaders, they all washed up. Out of everybody, Mr. Farrakhan, and you say, why why he didn't speak, whatever. Sometimes certain things don't need to be spoken of. You know what I'm saying? Mr. Had to, Mr. Farrakhan had to sit down and see stuff for himself, for his own personal value, and this world as well. He's quiet for a reason. And he got a word, you know what I'm saying? He got a word for us, whatever. I don't care if you're Muslim, gay, straight, black, white. He got a word, and you got to listen. It doesn't mean you have to, you know what I'm saying, merge to be a Muslim or merge to be a Christian. You got to have a relationship with God. God can care less about what church you go to, what mosque you go to. He cares about your relationship. That matters. Do you love him? Do you serve him? Are you helping your community? Special shout-out goes out to the NY. Because let me tell you something. 
you know, a lot of a lot of these church people, they, they did not do nothing. But, you know, the NOI, secure, NOI period, they was out there serving their community, you know what I'm saying, as far as the um, as far as far the wakes and the, um, the viewings. They were serving waters. They were serving, you know, serving food. They was doing what they were supposed to do to help their community. There was a there was an ear for everybody. Everybody, I mean, and the thing about it is, was as far as as far as Christianity goes, whatever, we lost our luster. We lost what service is. We really did. I'm so glad that Mr. Furcon got an opportunity to talk to T D Jakes because they always don't see eye to eye and stuff. So I glad I'm glad that they sat down and they talked about stuff. They preaching the same thing, whatever, but they have different ways of doing it. So I'm glad that him and T.D. Jakes, you know what I'm saying, hug it out. I'm glad that, you know what I'm saying, Al Sharpton and Bill Clinton, everybody was, everybody was sitting there. I know that was, a, that was a humbling experience for Mr. Farrakhan because they always thought he was an underdog. And, you know, sometimes being an underdog is a great thing because, you know what I'm saying, you're able to see what's going on and what's in the need of the people and what they need and what they don't need. But I did saw the final moment and it almost made me cry. Marvin Sapp, to me, shift the atmosphere a little bit. My favorite song from Marvin Sapp was called Perfect Peace. If you ever um have a, I mean, I go on iTunes, go on Deezer, go on whatever, and, and listen to the words of the song. No matter what situation you're going through, whatever, God will give you per perfect peace about situations and stuff. Even in my life, whatever, I don't understand, you know, when... I know when God calls me home, whatever, I'm going to be a peace about it because I'm going to leave everything on the earth. I'm not taking nothing with me, you know, and be confident knowing that where your soul is going at. But it was a defining moment for Mr. Farrakhan because I saw him just listen to the song and it made him cry. It really did. Just listen to all the, you know, all the acts, whatever made him cry. I saw one, I mean, I saw one of the, um, the Instagram uh, videos when he told Ricky Diller, you know, saying, you know, you keep on doing the work of God. You keep on operating your gift. Don't stop. And that and that and that meant something. It really meant something to Mr. Farrakhan. It really did. It opened his eyes to a lot of stuff. But perfect peace made him cry. He had a tear in his eye. I saw that. And that was beautiful, whatever. And he just gave Marvin Sapp a hug, like, man, that's a beautiful song. And it is a beautiful song. And it kind of shifted it shifted the atmosphere. To me. It shifted. And that's and that's what we need because to me I think the funeral itself I think it was kind of dark and I under I kind of understand what um Kathy was saying Kathy Franklin was saying whatever as far as the um eulogy I thought the eulogy was was I, I think they should have got someone of our time but I understood why they got why they, why they chose um Jasper Williams and he's a great preacher and he said a lot of things that he hit on a lot of things that need to be said about the black about the black family the woman you know what i'm saying is always raising the son but the, the woman the, the woman shouldn't be raising the son i mean woman should raise the son but but at the same token i think the father should be in the picture that's why it's so very important you gotta be very careful who you link who you who you link with whatever and you have to be very and when you do have a child whatever you have to set standards because if you don't set standards in in any situation, you're going to let the devil in. That's why so much demons and so much, you know, <coughs> killings are going on because we forgot to get back into the place where God wants us to be. We forgot our first love for real, to be honest with you. We really did. So much killings going on in Baltimore. Children are dying from cancer. Um, besides, I mean, to be honest with you, mental abuse and cancer are the top are the top right now. People dying for suicide. My heart and my prayers goes out to the family. This pre preacher in California, 30 years old, just found out he had stage one leukemia. Found out that his father passed away from cancer. He committed suicide about three weeks ago. So my prayers goes out to the family of that of that young man. Only 30 years old. A lot of people dying for suicide. Mental abuse is a very serious disease. I'm gonna make sure is I'm gonna make sure in my power that I talk about this. I'm gonna make sure I create an advocacy for this whatever. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna be hard work because you know Satan is real 
and he'll come I mean he'll come out come back come out to the people you know so who wants to do right and wants to change the world he'll go out the doors so I'm gonna keep fighting until God calls me home and that's how I feel about the situation it's a very serious situation because it affects our family. It affects the African American. I don't care if you're white, African American, whatever you call yourself. Mental abuse is a very serious disease. And the thing about it is, ain't nothing wrong going to counseling. Ain't nothing wrong. Because if you don't go to counseling, if you don't seek the help that you need, you're going to take it out on everybody. I refuse. I told myself this morning when I was when I was in my prayer closet, I refuse to let the devil have me. I don't care. I, I'm Have me or my child. I don't care. Or have my community. And it takes work. You got to go out there and do to work we do a lot of talking we do a lot of lip service we shouldn't be doing that and that's a very serious situation with me aretha franklin went through a lot of stuff for her past and the thing about it she really didn't talk about it or whatever and i respect her for that because everybody was going to judge her and that leads me to what her son said out of his out of his mouth i think that people was being very disrespectful with regards to miss franklin's funeral they didn't have that you know what i'm saying they didn't have that it was an intimate. Certain things need to be intimate, like the burial. They show when she got when she was buried in. Nobody need to know what Miss Franklin buried. That's for the family. You feel what I'm saying? It's like y'all y'all being a cloud chaser for real. And that really made me so mad. Like that just burned me inside. Then y'all say then people on Facebook take pictures of her laying in that casket. That made me so mad. <laughs> to be honest, with she losing Aretha Franklin is just like losing my grandmother. You know what I'm saying? It really did. It really touched my heart, whatever, because the simple fact is she meant a lot to everybody. She meant a lot to me. Now, I ain't going to lie, Miss Pat, Miss Franklin, child, who I couldn't stand her at times. But I loved her because the simple fact is what she did. She had every right to be what she wanted to be because the simple fact is she paved the way for everybody. She stood up for us when we didn't even stand up for ourselves. So I respect Miss Franklin. I really do. And I'm sad that she's gone. I really am sad. I'm about to cry. That's how sad it is. I miss her. I really do. Because you know what I'm saying? But people didn't do what they were supposed to do as far as honoring her. And I think people did not honor her. That really hurt the family. So my prayers goes out to the family. I pray that you get peace in this situation in this dark, in this dark time right now. That's a crazy situation. Um, to the to the girls who girls who's in um grandchildren who go to Howard University I pray that you know what I'm saying everything works out whatever you know because Miss Franklin was a, she was very um serious about education when I met so I pray that you know they continually they could cont all the grandchildren will continue on keeping Miss Franklin that can see alive because Miss Franklin lives inside of down I pray for the city of Detroit they are going to name the um park um, Aretha Franklin Park, and I think that's a, a great honor. And while you're doing that, it should be a scholarship fund. And while you're doing that, it should be, it should something should be community based. That's cool that you name you name in the park, whatever. But at the same token, y'all should do something community based, whatever, because we lost a lot of educational value within our youth, whatever. And Miss Franklin, she was about that. Make a fun, make a fun or something with special need children. You know what I'm saying? It's good that you need a part or whatever, but you still, there's work to, there's work need to be done. I challenge BET, I challenge VH1, I challenge MTV to come together and do scholarship funding for, I mean, in honor of Miss Franklin. She does a lot. Do, uh, do scholarship funding in honor of Michael Jackson and Prince and those who pass. They paved the way for us. They really did. We don't understand the, the blood, sweat, and tears. We don't understand their struggles or we don't understand their stories. I understand Miss Franklin's story so well because, you know what I'm saying, I went through some things. So I respect Miss Franklin. I really do. We don't understand, you know what I'm saying, she swept everything under the, you know, we, th we thought Aretha was, you know, so hard. She really was a shy person. She really was a very chilled out person. She ain't like a lot of foolishness. She ain't like a lot of drama. And I respect Miss Franklin. So in the case of Miss Franklin or whatever, you know, in the case of Miss Franklin, I made her soul rest in peace and she lives inside of us. I will turn and I will tune and trust me, there's going to be so many tributes. To be honest with you, Gladys Knight did okay. I respect her and keep her in prayer because she has stage one breast cancer. My favorite piece out of the funeral to me was the Clark sisters, Fantasia, um, Shaka with her with her no words, so she did her thing. But my fan, Smokey, of course, I love him. You know, that was her best friend. 
since they was like four years since they was like four years when Rita was four years old. They were the best friends. And I could, you know what I'm saying? I have two close guy friends. You know what I'm saying? They my best friends. I tell them all my secrets too. But those are my two best friends. So I understand losing a friend, whatever. You know what I'm saying? A good friend at that. I really, I really wasn't paying attention to Clyde Davis because he was not worth my time. Um, I love Tyler Perry, of course. You know, um, who else? Cicely Tyson, man. Cicely, she, she's dope and everything that she does. And she's 91 years old. And, you know, her and Aretha had a great relationship. And, you know what I'm saying? When she came in, when she saw her, she was just like, you know, she she going to miss her friend. You know what I'm saying? They was real good friends that did stuff in the civil rights era together. Jesse Jackson, he got on my dad going nerves because he was, you know what I'm saying, he got Parkinson's. So I understand, he got, you know, feel like he's doing something, whatever. Sometimes the best ministry is to sit down and chill out. That's your best ministry itself. It did, you did a lot of moving around and it, it just bothered my soul. I saw a lot of people moving around in the congregation. I th thought that was very disrespectful in honor of Miss Franklin. That's just me. I thought it was disrespectful. I didn't like that. It just it just